PO spot. I got a new PO, got to go through a whole synopsis for her. And long story short, she didn't even want me to do it, but she was like, look, I'm not going to stop you from making your money. You ain't got no trouble. You got some CDLs. So boom. All right, drivers, what's going on today? Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to jump into this little clip right here about this young man from TikTok. Make sure you subscribe to him. His link will be in the description. He's a new driver, but he's also a convicted felon that is out on parole. And he's having his little issues going through getting on with a trucking company that would take him on. In this clip right here, he talks about uh, how he feels that these that these companies are giving him weak offers. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. So what's up, y'all? Still on the hunt for the CEO job. So one thing that I have been getting is terrible offers. So let me give you a prime example. Um, a company called WEL Well out of Wisconsin. They offered me to come, they'll fly me out to go train somewhere for like two weeks at $500 a week. And I had to pay for food, so they paid for the hotel on the flight. After those two weeks at $500 a week, which is going to be paid a week behind, then they send you out with a driver for three months and you get paid $700 a week. With all due respect, I didn't get my CDLs to make $700 a week out on the road away from my family and loved ones. With all due respect on that one, my guy, listen. It, that's what they're going to offer you. You're a brand new driver, my man. They're, they're not just going to go ahead and up and give you thousands of dollars or nothing like that. No, no disrespect to you. I, I feel you. If you had the experience of coming in as an experienced driver with maybe about a, with about six months to a year up under your belt, then yeah, you can negotiate the offers that they're offering you right now. But being that you are a brand new driver, that just came out of CDL school and you just got your CDLs and now you're getting with a company that's willing to train you up under your circumstances. Yeah. You're going to have to go out and, and learn how to drive the truck, learn how the company operates, learn how to talk to this, to receivers and, and shippers and stuff like that. And they're not going to pay you that, that top tier money, at least not just yet. Not just yet, my man. Just go take the offer. Do what you got to do for those couple of those couple of weeks, couple of months. You're going to go in there. You're going to train and you're going to go out with a trainer. Trust me, I've been there. I've been there. I, I had started with five hundred dollar checks and and seven hundred dollar checks. I was eating on the road at like fifty dollars a week, sending home four fifty. I've been there. I know what you're going through. But but as far as the weak offers comment that you said, I I get you. I understand you. You you of course is right. You did not get your CDLs to come out here and drive anybody's truck for for five hundred six hundred dollars. So that's that. And then another terrible uh, business offer that I got was from Schneider, which is a major corporation. They offer to do what's called a jet set program where. They fly you out to like Wisconsin or something and you just drive for a month straight. And then, but they, they offer the rate of like $15 an hour. So you're telling me I got to work a month straight in a whole nother, you know, part of the country for $15 an hour, which they equivalent to like $600 a week. You know, so at the same point in time with new drivers, it's, it's hard as hard as it is for us to get jobs. They actually just really just trying to pimp us, how the insurance companies are pimping them for real. And these offers are like just quite disrespectful. Like at the end of the day, I went to school. I didn't just walk up to the MVA and test. Like I went to school, I went to an accredited program. Like give me my respect and give me my chance, you know? I get you. I get you. I will be kind of shaded on that one too. But I thought Snyder's Jet Set program was a program that you go and get the, get the vehicle and bring it back to a terminal of their choosing may may I, I don't know that's that was like a couple of years ago because snyder offered me the same same offer when i was looking for companies back in the day but, but i didn't know that they that they do it by the hour now but yeah i i still get you 15 dollars an hour and you working in a whole different state 
but you got to get your feet wet, my guy. You got to get your feet wet, man. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm advocating for you. I hope things work out for you. I hope you get the best deal possible. But coming into these companies that's that's willing to train you up under your circumstances, I mean, it's it's not too many companies that's gonna that's gonna say, here, I'm about to give you thousands of dollars and you're a brand new guy. In this clip right here, he talks about that he actually got an offer from someone, but he's seen the red flags though. But I do want to say something and I don't want to sound ungrateful. In fact, I thank the guy who tried to give me this opportunity. I'm not going to put his name, his company out there. And I don't think this is a reflection of his company. I think that this was just one bad business transaction from him trying to help a fellow ex-con. So I talked to a guy yesterday who basically was offering me veteran money to come work for him like right now. Veteran money. I, I got you. You're a brand new driver, though, so you got to be worried of black ops that's trying to get you to drive for them up under foreseen circumstances and check out the red flags along the way somebody reach out to you through facebook or something like that and they offer they say hey i see you struggling i see you trying to get a job i see you trying to do well for your family i see you're an ex-con here come 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 drive for me and then when you start driving for them that they want to just take advantage of you. So he was like, well, how soon can you get here? Because it's out of state. I'm in Baltimore, it's in New Jersey. So I'm like, well, I could, I got to check with the PO, but worst kind of worst, I could be there tomorrow night because the job is overnight. So he's like, well, all right, bet. So I'm like, listen, because he basically want to make sure that I'm certain about the job. But I'm like, listen, I'm about that money. The only thing that will stop me is the law. You know what I'm saying? Got on the phone this morning, called the PO spot. I got a new PO, got to go through a whole synopsis with her. And long story short she didn't even want me to do it but she was like look i'm not gonna stop you from making your money you ain't got no trouble you got some cdls so boom i get approved the moment i get approved i book a flight i tell him as soon as i get approved so he's trying to call me so i'm like bro i'm in the middle of booking this flight so he's like okay so when i when i get off the phone with from booking the flight and stuff i call him so he's like bro i gotta be real with you the truck that you're supposed to drive it needs ties i need to see if i can get somebody out there to do the ties Hang up the phone. I immediately canceled the flight and everything. Canceled my whole trip. I was Rats. You did right on that one, my guy. You did right on that one because if somebody's trying to get you to come out there and, and drive their trucks and everything, their trucks should already be ready for you. It should already have tires, should already be checked, should already have, it should be ready to go. The only thing that you need to do is just get in it and start driving and making that money. That's what, that's what it's all about. You see the flags, my guy. I commend you for seeing that. You saw the flags. You ran back. Hey, cancel my flight. I'm done. I'm done. And, and don't even give that guy a chance to come back and try and sweet talk you. I, I believe that's what, he, that's what he did. I would have had to drive 30, 45 minutes to D.C., jump on a plane to get to Jersey. So... I canceled it and all of that because at the end of the day, it's bad business. I cannot risk my freedom and everything for something that's unsure and it's something that's so simple as flat tires. And he actually found the roadside driver that was able to get the tires done in time and stuff. But I'm like, bro, it's just bad business. Like you, you should have had that done before you even inquired to me, especially last night when I let you know that I was serious, especially this morning when I'm telling you that I'm booking a flight. You wait till after I book the flight to tell me I got to try to find somebody to fix the tire. So I'm saying that if you're trying to help somebody and it's just a life lesson with all due respect, and I don't want to sound ungrateful, but please have your stuff together lined up. Like my, I'm a parolee, like my freedom and everything is on the line. I agree. I agree. You, you got more to lose my guy. Number one, you, you going out of state. So you're going somewhere that you're not familiar with. Number two, you're, you're still at kind and you still got to check in with your with your PO when they need you to check in. And this guy is, is already setting you up for failure just by just by going out there to let you, hey, I need to get the tires fixed. But I commend the guy, though. Let me stop. I commend the guy for letting letting this young man know that, hey, before you come out here, 
I, I, I may have to do some, some work to the truck before you could start driving. So even before I even start driving or making any money, I got to wait until you get your truck fixed. Why aren't you doing that now while I'm out here? Because you, you making it like, Hey, I need a driver. I'm ready to give you this veteran money. And, and I need you to come out here and do it. I'm going to give you a chance because I've been there where you've been, yada, 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 the spill, the, the drink, the coffee. Well, not coffee, not coffee. Coffee's good. Coffee's always good. If you guys like to get me some coffee, my cash app is dollar sign lockout man. I would appreciate some, some good coffee. But no, this, this right here, this is just bad tea. And, and he caught on to it, and I, commend, and I commend this gentleman for it. But again, my guy, you got to, you, I know you, you, you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere before you start making this quote unquote bag, because there's no bag in the beginning for you. There is none. I'm not, I'm not saying that there's not in the beginning, because in the beginning for me, it was 35 cent a mile. In the beginning for me, it was $500, $700 checks. But now with experience, with time come experience, with experience comes the money. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, in too deep like Omar. Make me want to track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama want to get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy. Bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes, look Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. Been crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. Blame it on the things I went through.